film is a medium that depends on visual artistry. With the full range of unique elements to combine and repurpose in film, cinema is a form of expression like no other. Only cinema's greatest creators have been able to utilize the many resources that can be combined to tell a story in filmic language and to create pieces of art that improve upon their counterparts from generation to generation. Throughout film history, each major industry or niche has had their classic years, presided over by classic directors whose unique visions made timeless masterpieces. In India, this period of popular cinema took place in the 1940s and 50s, dubbed the Golden Age. Of all the directors and stars that participated in the industry at that time, Guru Dutt was one of the most masterful imaginations in classic Indian cinema. His film Piyasa is one of the most iconic films of all time, an epic story of a tortured artist. Dutt's all-encompassing blending of so many unique elements in Piazza and its musical sequences elevated the film to its now iconic status to hold the title of one of Indian cinema's greatest creators. Guru Dutt, born July 9, 1925, was one of the most iconic auteurs of Indian cinema. Dubbed the Hindi Hamlet, he began working on film sets in 1944 and released his first film, Bazi, in 1951. Learning the craft as he worked on many films, Dutt became famous for making films that he wrote, directed, starred in, and produced. His first films were action flicks, noirs, and romantic comedies, but his style drastically changed after he discovered actress Wahida Raymond. Dutt and Raymond had an infamous love affair, and his film Kagaz Ke Fool mirrors many aspects of Dutt's real life. The film depicts a director who discovers an actress and falls in love with her, but as his career declines, hers rises and he commits suicide. Both Piazza and Kagaz Ke Fool contain Dutt's autobiographical elements. Therefore, it's both haunting and bittersweet to learn that Dutt committed suicide in 1964. Piazza and Kagaz Ke Fool were Dutt's most famous works. Stylistically, these films elevated Dutt to the level of the auteur. He utilized game-changing lighting techniques, lighting the set, not the actors, as to create a variety of looks and allow shadows to move and change throughout the frame. And experimental methods of cinematography, especially in his dance sequences. In Piazza, Dutt plays Vijay, a tortured poet who is ostracized for trying to make a statement with his writing. When his brothers sell his poems as waste paper, he meets Gulab, the prostitute that has bought them. She tries to seduce him with his own song. Throughout the story, many important figures in Vijay's life are introduced. His friend, the masseuse, and Mr. Ghosh, a publisher who doesn't care about the art, only the product. Vijay works as his assistant after being tricked into the position. Mr. Ghosh's wife is Mina, Vijay's first love from college. She married Ghosh for money, status, and comfort, and Vijay grapples with this choice throughout the film. One night, after his mother dies, Vijay drowns his sorrows in alcohol and stumbles through Calcutta's red light district before contemplating suicide. He gives his jacket to a homeless man, and although he fails to kill himself, the man dies in an accident while wearing the jacket. Now that Vijay is dead, Gulab begs Mr. Ghosh to publish his work. Mr. Ghosh does, but only because of the profit he can turn on the tragedy of a dead poet. The book is extremely successful. However, at the same time, Vijay is trapped in a hospital, and then a prison, because his brothers and Mr. Ghosh continue to misidentify him to receive their profits. On the one-year anniversary of his death, Vijay returns to the world in the middle of a memorial service for him. The service becomes a riot. After the chaos, Vijay renounces society and the way the world has treated him and his working-class friends. He takes Gulab's hand, and they walk away together. Piazza is a film that is powerful, both in its social commentary as well as how personal it is. The film propelled Dutt towards being perceived as a master of the Indian genre of the social, cinematic stories that blend many elements from different genres into an epic picture. Piazza incorporates realism, melodrama, fantasy, romance, comedy, and musical numbers into one film that would feel hollow without each genre properly represented. 
Piazza displays distinctive coherence in its genres and themes. There's so much tension in the juxtaposition of high and low experiences. Calcutta's sophistication versus Bombay's commercialism. The working class speaking Hindi versus the elite speaking Urdu. Art versus commerce. At the same time, Piazza tackles the feelings of young adults in post-independence India, aka Midnight's young adults. In flashbacks, we see Vijay and Meena in college, hopeful and excited. But a decade later, we see how India had failed them. Meena married for money, not passion, while Vijay is an outcast because he'll never give up his unpopular beliefs. Gulab sells her body in Calcutta's red light district, where one of Dutt's songs of protest takes place. The film is a protest. It calls out India on their empty promises. It's interesting to note that there are no female stereotype characters in Piazza. In Indian cinema's golden age, there were generally two types of female characters, the virgin and the vamp. The virgin was a woman who always strived for morality, who was modest, dressed in traditional Indian dress, and would sacrifice herself for the greater good whenever needed. The vamp, on the other hand, was a scandalous woman, sometimes in western dress or smoking. She would try to seduce the leading man and use her sensual quality to disrupt the peace. These types of characters can be limiting to a plot, and Dutt did away with these tropes almost completely. Dutt does not only immerse us in the world of Vijay, but in Gulab's and Meena's. His consideration for his female characters is unlike that of any other Indian auteur. To accompany Dutt's proficiency in creating a diversity of themes and tones in his subject matter throughout the film, Piazza's musical sequences are legendary pieces of lyrical and visual storytelling. The cinematography in this film is fantastical, dreamlike, as it's so full of life and motion. The camera acts as another perspective in the film, a dynamic element that gives the viewer an idea of how we're supposed to feel throughout each scene. In these buoyant musical numbers, Dutt synchronizes cuts to the rhythm, as well as actors' movements, commandeering the movement of camera around and through static objects. In some scenes, the camera wildly tracks in and out, moving to and from characters, as if to breathe with the rhythm and the song. This attention to detail elevates the overall quality of the film, and immerses the audience in an unexplainable way. We're enveloped in their world. We're allowed to move through it, spectate, and be a part of it. Dutt utilizes these elements seamlessly, changing with the feel of each scene. In Daisy Rockwell's essay, Visionary Choreographies, Guru Dutt's Experiments in Film Song Picturization, Rockwell separates each musical number into one of two categories, lyrically complex, visually simple, or visually complex, lyrically simple. Dutt tends to pull back on one element in order to showcase another, or emphasize his message through symbolism. For example, Jiane kia tune kahi, or Who Knows What You Said, is a visually complex, lyrically simple number. In this scene, Vijay has realized this woman is the one that bought his poems for 10 annas back at the store. The woman, on the other hand, is Gulab, a prostitute, and she's now using Vijay's poem to lure her customer in. These lyrics are extremely simple. Gulab is generally repeating the main hook of Who knows what you said? Who knows what I heard? Something stirred in my heart. In this number, where characters would usually dance, both Vijay and Gulab are mostly static, aside from Gulab's trance-like walk back towards her home. The camera seems to dance from shot to shot. The camera follows Gulab's movements very closely as she lures Vijay. Sometimes it centers on her face, or her body as a whole, the camera consistently following her every movement with an intense precision. In wide shots, the camera tracks towards the left, and we see Gulab and Vijay move between two large columns through light and shadow. The columns, a representation of the relationship of these two characters, their misunderstandings are getting in the way of something more, and their differences will keep them separated from each other. In the visually simple, lyrically complex scene for Jean et Vauquez et Lotte, Vijay begins reciting at a party where Mr. Gosh tricks him into waiting. Vijay, posed as a Christ-like figure in a white outfit, sings a despondent melody as the camera gently tracks towards and away from both himself and the partygoers, Mina as well. Again, the camera tilts up and down slowly to match the movements of Vijay's head. 
When he begins to belt the lyrics, the camera zooms out quickly, a harsh and intense contrast of the smooth pans and tracks from earlier in the song. The camera floats through the scene. It sways and lulls with the song, giving the viewer the perspective of some of the most important characters thus far, as well as illuminating the distinction of class versus class and artist versus product. Guru Dutt's mastery of the camera and his ability to infuse the works with a truly musical sensibility, whether in an actor's movements or the dynamic use of the camera, make his films experiences that audiences could still find exciting and enthralling. His cinematic genius allowed him to create a full-blown patchwork of stories and songs that breathe together and seduce the viewer. As Piazza moves between tones, themes, and genres, Dutt flows every element with control and consideration. His work has elevated him to a true cinematic legend who will be remembered throughout history. As Gulab now ironically says, if only you could see this with your own eyes. Thank you so much for watching this video, and hello to all my viewers from India. Apologies on butchering the song titles, but I hope I did some justice to one of my favorite films of all time. This was adapted from a paper for my Indian cinemas class way back in 2019, and I have a couple more papers from that and another Indian history class I'm probably going to make videos from too, so let me know if you guys are interested. Anyways, if you like this, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.